The Bank of England steps in to calm markets, announcing it would buy long-dated bonds, causing government bond prices to soar. The scale and speed of the sell-off in British assets have added to the global jolt in the world market, raising concerns about, you know, possible contagion and chaos led by the Fed's aggressive rate hike cycle. For perspective and to help connect the dots back to countries where British investors are putting their money in, Chris Nelson joins us live, still all the way from Portugal. It's early morning there, Chris. Always appreciate you joining us. Well, good morning, yeah, and good morning to your viewers. Yeah, it's uh, nice to be here. Uh, Chris, um, why don't you give us a sense of where British investors are today? What is the sentiment? What are your investors, the businesses in your chamber telling you? Well, I think, you know, uh, I, I mean, I've been watching the program, so I say there's a two things. So first of all, of course, it's the interest in the Philippines. We've just actually had uh, a two-day virtual trade mission, so I think... They're quite optimistic in terms of the Philippines and outlook and what mm -hmm. we're trying to do. And then, of course, you've got the backdrop and you, your report quietly noted that the British pound has depreciated mm -hmm. versus the dollar at about 20 percent this year. Uh, of course, it's dollar strength, which is affecting all currencies. Uh, and if that's, of course, so the peso. And the pound has also depreciated against the peso by about 8 percent. So I think the way to look at it is the following. I think that... British companies, and we just had at least nine of those, are looking very much at markets overseas. They're looking at the Philippine market. And then, of course, we have what's going back on in the UK, uh, where clearly, obviously, the mini budget, the fact that we've, uh, they've, the government's moved mm -hmm. to cap energy bills to reduce taxes. And this, of course, has led to concerns, which, of course, led to the Bank of England yesterday buying government mm -hmm. gilts. Mm -hmm. uh, but, Chris, uh, when you talk to the businesses, uh, British investors, are they still bullish about making investments or do you feel they're holding back, maybe deferring or investing a little less? No, I think uh, the way we look at it is this. I think our investors are continuing to look ahead mm. because what they look for is the longer term. And we've built a lot of these relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we've been building and working, as you know, on the British Chamber to promote trade investment between the UK and the Philippines now for, I mean, it's over eight years. We've been doing it. I've been doing it myself personally. Mm -hmm. So I think they look longer term. Uh, of course, you know, will they be impacted by input costs? Of course, the depreciation could make, of mm. course, uh, those goods more competitive in the Philippines. And let's not forget, we've seen very good performances. I mean, we've discussed this before. British pork, for example, is up by 30% this year. Mm -hmm. So we see that continue to grow. And we see a lot of opportunity for the companies in the food and beverage sectors. Mm -hmm. Chris, you mentioned pork. Very interesting. Uh, UK pig, uh, pig meat exports are up 37% in the first six months. That's what you mentioned. This as we're, we're, we're living in an environment where you've got a 15% in quota and 25% out quota tariff rates per pork, which are extended until December 31. But Chris, here's the thing. I just got a copy of a letter from a group of pork meat importers who are actually asking the government of Mr. Marcos, President Bongbong Marcos, to uh, put in import duties on pork at 5%, even lower, 5% in quota and 15% out quota for five more years. Do you think this is going to boost this industry and the sort of trade that we see for this uh, between the two countries further? Oh, uh, undoubtedly. I mean, we've seen a lot of opportunities. I mean, the Philippines is now the second most important market, uh, hmm. I think, outside of China. Uh, and I have to put a lot of credit with our partners, which is the Agricultural Horticultural Development Board. And they are coming back uh, again, actually. So we ran a very successful meat mission mm -hmm. with them, British Meat, in May. Uh, and they're coming back for a second event uh, on the way through to uh -huh. some other parts of Asia. And that'll be on the 2nd of December. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I mean, the interest, and I think that's going to continue. And also, that's also helping, let's not forget, the supply of pork, British pork, and the high quality, and also mm -hmm. beef, uh, is also one of the reasons also, of course, helping, of course, on price inflation or food inflation, which, as you recall, was one of the earlier issues but prior to that. So, yes, I see it going forward. And obviously, we work closely as well, and we have very good ties with Hampi and the meat importers. Mm -hmm. But, but he, you mentioned, Chris, that the Philippines is the second most important partner 
uh, for the UK after China. Um, I know that we're now working, uh, the UK will roll out a new trading framework instead of the GSP or the generalized um, preference, system of preference. You're, you're going to be using the developing countries trading scheme, DCTS. Uh, how will that, Great. could you give us, could you remind us how will that further boost our trade relations? What is going to be the difference between that and GSP, which already offers, you know, a very low or zero tariff for certain products? Yeah, so look, it's, it was just launched on the 16th of August. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to cover over 80% of Philippine products going into the UK will be duty free. Mm -hmm. uh, as our ambassador, Lord Bofis, has said, this will further boost and develop trade between the two countries. And I think what is the key here and for now, it's simplifying some of the measures in terms of countries of origin, some of the other re regulations and requirements. So we see that as a further boost. And yes, I think it will develop. So in terms of GFP+, I think it's a, it's a more simplified version. It's a better version. And obviously, we're optimistic because it covers over 80%. And uh, I think in terms of value, over 90% of the Philippine products go into the UK. Okay. So as we've noted, we see that as a further boost. And we continue to work with the Department of International Trade to develop mm -hmm. those strong points and benefits of DCTS. Mm -hmm. If we are so important, why don't we have a bilateral trade deal yet? Just like Vietnam with the UK. <laughs> Well, I mean, what I've mentioned, of course, is on pork. In terms of bilaterals, I think that uh, the UK works across various markets, mm -hmm. but I think DCTS will be a great aid to us. Uh, and although I know you've mentioned and asked me on a number of occasions <laughs> about the FDA, uh, and, I, 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 and I, I noted that. So, look, I think that the UK values highly the, the Philippines. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, last year was the 75th year of diplomatic relations. We have very strong ties. President Marcos uh, has very good relations. We know connections with the UK. He went to Oxford. Uh, my understanding is children went to the British School of Manila. So there are very strong ties. And we see a lot of interest as we've developed, and of course, as our embassy mm -hmm. and as our ambassador is doing, to further develop. And obviously, uh, just announced, I think, recently as well, further investments from the UK, looking at investments from our, the British Investment Fund into green energy and other mm. uh, areas All of right. that type. So, yes, a key focus. All right. On that note, Chris, always a pleasure to speak with you. We look forward to speaking with you next month in the same time zone. Philippines already, back in Manila. Uh, no, October, I'll still be here. Oh, okay, November, November then. <laughs> okay. But I'm looking forward to it. All right. Uh, and I wish your viewers and everybody else a very good day. Always you a pleasure too. to speak to you, Mimi, and the Dallas. All right. Take See you care. soon. Okay, now before we go.